didn't even attend US Nationals, mm -hmm. but I know he worked so hard with the specific core that he's going to be using in, in this matchup. Yeah, did I see a Blaziken on that? I don't think so. There was an Infernape. <laughs> a Fernape. Yeah. The other one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I get all of the firefightings really confused. Right, right. Except for Imbor. That's the one that I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there is an Infernape. Justin's team, I believe there was also a... He's using kind of a unique combination in Kyogre and Xerneas. And uh, that's something that I know Justin has been working on using and trying out for a very, very long time. And I believe he put in a ton of prep in with this core specifically. And the winner of this is going to move on to Top Cut. And I think both of these players are people that... Uh, you know, you might not consider a heavy favorite. So Sebastian mm -hmm. qualified for day two through the Latin America system, but Justin here, you know, uh, kind of just squeaking in, over, had just over 350 championship points, and here he is trying to make a name for himself as a top American and a top player in the world. Yep, so we are going to see Sebastian here on stream once again. Justin, uh, for those of you who do not know, since you cannot see it on the screen right now, he will be running that Infernape, Xerneas, Amoongus, Salamence, Kyogre, and Bronzong for his team. So actually the first Xerneas Kyogre core that I've seen here in the tournament, of course, Sebastian will be running uh, that sort of modified big six team, Groudon, Xerneas, Smeargle, Talonflame, Kangaskhan, uh, with the Amoongus. And there it is, leading off the Infernape alongside Xerneas, up against the Smeargle Xerneas lead from Sebastian. Yeah, I think if you're Sebastian, you know, your Smeargle here obviously always already puts on so much pressure. Infernape does have big up pressure, and we do see Infernape come back, and it's really funny because it was a pretty top dominant force in 2010, often paired with Palkia actually, but different partner this time. It's going to be Xerneas. There is fake up pressure immediately. Both Xerneases are out, so one of the questions is who Xerneas is going to be faster, who is going to Geomancy. You'd imagine maybe both players want to get that early game Geomancy. Infernape also does get access to Faint, so if you want to eliminate Smeargle immediately, you could go for something like a Faint and a Dazzling Gleam or a Moonblast, but no Faint. We just see a fake out, and it does start getting Smeargle. Yeah, so Infernape will get that fake out off first, and a Geomancy first coming out from Sebastian's Xerneas. So Xerneas will go ahead, get that Geomancy, boost its uh, special attack, special defense, and also speed uh, going to become a threat immediately starting turn two. Of course, Infernape getting that fake out off onto Smeargle means that Smeargle won't be able to do any Smeargle things here. Justin Xerneas will be able to Geomancy. Uh, not sure yet if that's a, a speed tie or if Justin just has a slower Xerneas here. Right. Uh, we'll figure that out a little bit later on, most likely. But both Xerneas getting their Geomancies up thanks to the fake out from Infernape and uh, crucially breaking that Focus Sash onto the Smeargle as well. Right. And so we are going to see the Moody Boost. Let's see what it gets here. Oh! oh! Evasiveness. Sebastian has just been nailing those evasive boosts. I think that's the, the <laughs> third or the fourth evasiveness boost that I've seen. That's a pretty good boost to get if you are Sebastian there. It's probably the one that only really matters. The speed increase shouldn't matter mm -hmm. since Xerneas should be able to outspeed it anyway. But, uh, you know, this is a big, big turn. And for any of us, a Pokemon that does get access to Focus Sash, and Smeargle mm -hmm. right now is going to be the slowest Pokemon on the field. However, of course, it does have that evasion increase, and you've got to be a little bit scared of that if you're Justin, because if you miss your one attack, for example, if you don't double target it, if you miss mm -hmm. your attack, then it's just going to be able to get a Dark Void off. All right, well, it looks like Sebastian Xerneas is going to be faster here. Gets off the Dazzling Gleam, drops the Infernape down to its Focus Sash. Justin will connect with the Dazzling Gleam. Uh, no avoids there from the Smeargle. Picks up the KO there. Xerneas taking a little bit of damage damage back for itself. Infernape going straight for the close combat onto the Xerneas, dealing a little bit of damage, most likely just trying to double up on that Smeargle to make sure that it, uh, just in case an evasive evasion did happen, that it had to happen twice. Yeah, exactly. A really safe play there. Surprised that I did not see something like a wide guard or a spiky shield from that Smeargle. Mm -hmm. So Smeargle just goes down. Great play by Justin there. That a close combat damage actually could matter because, of course, anytime you get a Geomancy boost off, the de special defense increase is a right. big deal. So uh, even we've seen that Justin Xerneas is slower mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, most likely it's not going to be a speed, speed tie here. Mm -hmm. So you need that extra damage because you want to be able to survive and then retaliate back. We see Amoongus coming in here. Yeah, so Sebastian bringing the Amoongus out this time. Uh, probably afraid of a, the potential for a Trick Room version on Justin's side, but also uh, Amoongus is a Pokemon that we see quite a bit at the World Championships uh, because that Spore move is just so oppressive. Yeah, definitely. I mean, 2011 World Championships, 2012, 2013. Like, just, it's there every mm -hmm. year, and it's not a surprise to see it back here once again. But the thing about Amoongus here is it doesn't do very much damage. You could get a Spore off. So Justin here maybe wants to protect the Xerneas and sacrifice the Infernape to get a free switch in, or maybe he just wants to go for attack. Well, it seems like Sebastian wants to use that Rage Powder just to protect itself a little bit. 
Uh, going to keep firing off those dazzling gleams. We'll pick up the KO onto Infernape, dealing a little bit more good damage back to that uh, to Justin Xerneas. Moonblast will come out though from Justin. It connects with the Amoongus thanks to that uh, Rage Powder. Not very effective, but still deals about 50% hit points there. Yeah. And no Citrus Berry popping up. I think if you're Sebastian, you probably like that trade off a little bit oh, more. Oh, definitely. You eliminate the Infernape, which can one hit knock out the Amoongus, and you do a lot of damage to Xerneas. And, and it looks like it will be a roll on if that's a three hit KO. It might be, yeah. And that's going to be really, really yeah. close here. Uh, but, you know, Kyogre coming in here doesn't exactly help Justin out too much. That's why Kyogre Xerneas can be a little bit weak because against opposing. Xerneas, you know, it's a big threat there. So, uh, it basically, Sebastian reading into the fact, okay, he's probably going to want to move blast Xerneas. We don't see any switch outs from Justin's end. Infernape just goes down, and Xerneas is now potentially in KO range. Of yeah. course, a move blast can knock it out uh, as well. And Sebastian Xerneas, you know, at this point, faster. Yeah, it looks like we saw 71 and 70 damage last couple of times. So, could be very close if that Xerneas survives. If Justin Xerneas is able to survive and deal damage back, especially with that Amoongus switching out, no more Rage Powder, that could be a the shift that Justin needs to bring this game back. Groudon will switch in, though, to prevent any kind of Water-type attacks from the Primal Kyogre. Great switch in there. Yeah, definitely trying to protect the Xerneas from any extra damage. Uh, have to see if Justin predicted that would happen, though. Could just be taking free damage onto Groudon. Xerneas, though, will protect, so Justin's just going to protect this turn. Uh, not going on the offensive, doesn't want to risk the roll just yet. Dazzling Gleam will go into the Protect and connect with the Kyogre, uh, dealing a little bit of damage back. Water uh, Spout, oh no, great switch from Sebastian. No Water the water Spout is not able to do any damage thanks to the Desolate Land. Yeah, and it feels like Sebastian really thought out his game plan here. He realized, I'm going to bring in Amoongus, I'm going to protect the Xerneas well, and then I'm going to bait the Kyogre. And on Kyogre, it looks like kind of a you know, useless Pokemon right now. It's forced to switch out, and you know there's a good chance that Sebastian can capitalize off and win maybe this turn. Oh, and Bronzong switching into a Groudon in the sun just feels bad. Feels bad, man. Feels real bad. And Xerneas will faint because the Moonblast uh, is the option from Sebastian with Groudon able to... Uh, put off a lot of pressure. Of course, the Precipice Blades will not affect that Bronzong, so we know it's Levitate at least. Not yeah. heat proof, which we have been seeing some of. And that's actually but now a Kyogre big deal. gets in. Yeah, that's a big deal here because if you just fire punch that slot, which is a relatively safe play because Kyogre, you know, you can most can ice beam, so you mm -hmm. do a lot of damage or try to nail the Bronzong switch in. But Bronzong and Kyogre here actually have a decent matchup because Groudon can touch Bronzong right now with the rain up. Of yeah. course, the only and issue. Set up trick room. Yeah, the only but issue is know. that Amoongus is in the back. Mm -hmm. um, and so. You know, if Bronzong was a way to shut down Amoongus, maybe he can pull something off. So it's still, you know, looking very good for Sebastian, but he could have sealed that game off last turn instead, maybe playing a little bit safe. But Amoongus, one of the best Pokemon you can have to counter Trick Room, as we saw in the 2013 World Championship mm -hmm. Finals. All right, well, Amoongus is going to switch in now. Kyogre will go ahead and protect. Uh, it's very much looking like Justin setting up a, uh, a Trick Room term here. Yep, so Bronzong does set up the Trick Room. Moonblast into the Protect. So Sebastian, with that switch, will be able to get that Amoongus out, uh, which could be pretty big. Amoongus, though, did not also regenerate any health uh, when it switched out. Uh, so no regenerate there, which I guess means that's going to be uh, an effect score. Which is actually super interesting, mm -hmm. right? Normally you you would think that Amoongus, because it likes to switch out because of how bulky it is, can get the HP back with the regenerator. But effect score, a really interesting ability in the sense that it can shut down Kangaskhans mm -hmm. uh, particularly. Uh, it's a good trick room, but now Amoongus can kind of just spore Kyogre, and that's a big issue. Uh, but, you know, yeah. it's actually still not over here. Uh, the, th the, the main thing is that now you do have that skill swap potential with Kyogre and Groudon, mm -hmm. or Kyogre and uh, Bronzong. All right, well, Amoongus is going to go ahead and start sporing. Will spore the Kyogre here. So Kyogre is asleep and will be asleep for a little while. Bronzong uses the Gyro Ball into the Xerneas' Protect. Xerneas, or, sorry, Kyogre using its turn of sleep here uh, will potentially be able to wake up next turn. Yeah. Uh, but still, this Amoongus is able to, has been able to really shift the momentum. Yeah, definitely. A lot of this comes down to what attacks the players use. You know. Bronzong here, of course, can Gyro Ball, can do a lot of damage to that Xerneas. Of course, Amoongus can also Rage Powder that damage, but mm -hmm. what water type attack does Kyogre have? Can Kyogre knock out the Xerneas given that it's got the plus two special defense uh, yeah. uh, increase? And, you know, most likely not. So I think Sebastian still is in an okay position, but Justin, you know, if he wakes up with Kyogre, maybe he can pull something off here. It's really going to come down to what happens here. No Rage Powder, though, just no, a Grass Knot. No Rage Powder, no other spores. Just going for the Grass Knot onto uh -oh. the Kyogre. Doesn't pick up the KO. Gyro Ball will connect with the Xerneas. So Bronzong able to pick up the KO onto Xerneas there. Can it wake up? not able to pick up the KO Does onto it wake Kyogre. Up? Oh. Still asleep. Kyogre is not going to be able to spend any time here. 
And now knowing that that Amoongus went first in Trick Room, uh, Sebastian should feel pretty safe with this crowd on out. Yeah, that's a huge break there, though. If that Kyogre wakes up and Ice Beams and knocks out the Amoongus, then all you have to do is skill swap and mm -hmm. use your water type attack onto the crowd on. So uh, really, really tight there. And it looks like Justin has realized that this, there's not much he can do. It looks like he's going to forfeit this one. Yeah, going to forfeit game one. Doesn't want to give any additional information over to Sebastian. So Sebastian Escalante is one game away from qualifying for top cut. The first time Argentina would be represented in the Masters division. And just look how calm and composed he is. You know, he's mm -hmm. a first year master here. He's only 15 or 16 years old and yeah. he's ready to prove himself and you know get to that stage. Yeah, and Justin needs to focus, needs to make some changes there. Uh, we'd ne we did not see the Amoongus the last time we saw Sebastian on stream, but of course, Justin bringing that trick room mode, Amoongus loves it when your opponent sets up trick room for it. I think if anything, Justin needs kind of a more of a defined game plan there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the first couple turns looked okay, but his best answer against Amoongus is his own Infernape, and that Infernape wasn't able to stick around. We, we did see that Amoongus does take a lot of damage, and it doesn't have a Citrus Berry or Regenerator, so at least yeah. you know it doesn't have that many ways to heal itself. The damage will stick. Exactly. No Giga Drain either, so mm -hmm. really this Amoongus can't uh, you know, kind of sustain itself in terms of health. But uh, Justin definitely needs a little better of a game plan. I thought he executed that relatively well, and Bronze on Kyogre is mm -hmm. really strong against Groudon Xerneas, but you have to be able to bring it out at the right positions and Amoongus makes that 10 times more difficult for Justin. Yeah. I, I think I think Sebastian will need to protect that Amoongus a little bit better uh, because Justin if he adapts to the lack of Regenerator, the lack of Citrus Berry, can focus on getting a lot of that chip damage down onto Amoongus and then set up the Trick Room Road, which Sebastian really doesn't have a good answer to outside of that Amoongus. Yeah, absolutely. And we see the Infernape Xerneas once again, but the King has gone Talonflame this time from Sebastian, switching things up a little bit. Yeah, last time uh, Sebastian liked to lead the Talonflame Kangaskhan matchup, there was a, uh, a lot of side power up punching. Uh, <laughs> May not have the opportunity to do that here. Actually, quick guard from Justin, so does go for the fake out. Quick guard will prevent that from having any effect, uh, but the quick guard also will ensure that Xerneas can get that Geomancy off. Yeah, so Kang has gone off the not to Mega Evolve, maybe predicting a fake out from the Infernape mm -hmm. there, but that's actually a big deal here, depending on how fast the Xerneas is relative to Kangaskhan. Yeah. Because he gets the plus two boost, the Tailwind on the other side is basically negated. And yeah. so if Xerneas naturally outspeeds Kangaskhan, he could actually just get a knockout here before Kangaskhan does anything, despite the Tailwind being off. And Kangaskhan is still in its normal form, so it will not be able to get any additional uh, any stats from, from Mega ev Evolving until the next turn. Exactly, and so this is going to be close here. Uh, you know, that Tailwind, that, that, that first turn play is actually really, really smart by Justin. A Quick Guard is such a good move against both Kangaskhan and Talonflame. Probably one of the best moves you could ask for because that renders Talonflame's Brave Bird absolutely useless. Yep. And no fake out from Kangaskhan. So here we go, Kangaskhan's going to Mega Evolve. Yeah, Mega Kangaskhan on the field. Xerneas actually protecting this turn. Uh, so not trying to go on the offensive immediately. Talonflame uses the Flare Blitz into the Protect. Kangaskhan return into the Infernape. So we'll be able to move first, go attack the Infernape, pick up a one-hit KO with both punches of, the rat of that return. Yeah, so Justin maybe knowing, okay, my Xerneas is pretty slow. I don't expect it to outspeed the Kangaskhan. Mm -hmm. Or maybe forgetting like Kangaskhan didn't get the speed boost. One of the options right. there. Perhaps you just wanted to save switch in here. I mean, Kyogre does come in, but I'm not sure if that's a trade you really want to take if you're Justin there. Yeah. An opportunity to get some free damage off and knock out the Kangaskhan. Uh, perhaps, you know, he was just really fearing the Brave Bird and the double edge target or return target onto the Xerneas. Mm -hmm. And was like, you know, I'll, maybe he'll double up into it. I can close combat, just knock out Kangaskhan. But that's not the case. And now Justin is down 3-4 to Tailwind. Yeah, and Justin needs to win this match. If Justin loses this match, he can still make it to top cut, mm -hmm. but it will be a little bit more difficult. We'll only have one more game uh, as his buffer. And Kyogre and Xerneas is two restricted Pokemon, a very strange restricted core that we don't see very often. Right. He has them both out on the field, matched up against this Talonflame and Kangaskhan. Here we go. There's still a lot of priority with Talonflame spray. Yeah. Right. Kangaskhan can Sucker Punch as well. And they're just fast. Right. They got the Tailwind. And the Groudon switching is a big thing you have to worry about as well. We saw that happen in the mm -hmm. last game where the Water Spout was uh, you know, just instantly negated. So yeah. if you're Justin, you really have to ask, do I want to use Water Spout or maybe do I want to switch out? Nope, Justin do definitely does not want to use Water Spout. <laughs> uh, is instead going to switch out for Bronzong. So getting the Bronzong on the field, uh, possibly going to try and set up a Trick Room uh, a little bit later or just tank some damage coming out from Sebastian. Uh, so the Brave Bird will connect with the Bronze on good switch in there. Not going to take much damage, uh, causing Talonflame to take the recoil and the life orb. 
the Life Orb recoil. Kangaskhan will connect with a return on the Bronzong as well. So very good switch in there. Bronzong took a lot of damage, but crucially that Kyogre did not take any damage. Moonblast from this Geomancy boosted Xerneas will be able to pick up the KO onto Kangaskhan back too. Yeah, I'm not quite sure if I... Yeah, I can understand the play, I guess, right? Because uh, maybe you expect the Xerneas to switch out into the Bronze on. Maybe Kyogre just gambles for a water spell. But that's significantly more riskier for Justin. I thought, like, Justin made the relatively, I would say, obvious play. But there's so many mind games that go on, so it's hard to critique, really. He may just not be afraid of this Xerneas. Right. And, and identify Kyogre as the bigger threat here. Right. Although, uh, Smeargo comes in here and... Uh, you know, Justin actually has a pretty good positioning in terms of uh, damage right mm -hmm. now. Top flame, of course, can't flare blitz that bronze long, but the Kyogre switching is always something that could happen. But Smeargle's Dark Void is something you also have to be scared of. Yeah, and of course, that Smeargle does also still have its Focus Sash. So just a Dazzling Gleam would not be enough. Xerneas will protect. Sebastian seems very happy about that. Oh! Smeargle goes for the fake out into the Protect. Top oh! flame, though, will get the flare blitz off onto the Bronzong, and Justin will not be able to make use of that Pokemon anymore because it has fainted to Sebastian's Talonflame. Bronzong will go back to Justin, and only the two restricted Pokemon left, the Xerneas and the Kyogre. Sebastian still has all four Pokemon, and a Smeargle Moody Boost gets a special defense boost and a speed drop. Yeah, Sebastian actually did lose his Kangaskhan. Oh, earlier. that's right, the Kangaskhan went down. So this is a, still a little bit scary for him because Smeargle is still such a passive Pokemon mm -hmm. and Talonflame's damage up, but you know, you can Brave Bird at Mozarnius or Kyogre, yeah. but they're still at full HP and both of them are. So even though that was a nice play by Sebastian last turn, you know, knocking out Bronson doesn't help you out too much in the sense that Justin still has a ton of offense going on his side. But crucially, it does mean that Kyogre and Xerneas are locked in here with no way to reset the weather if Groudon is in the back. Right. The only issue is those Sebastian have enough firepower right now to knock out both Xerneas and Kyogre because mm -hmm. you might be able to get a Brave Bird off, but uh, a combination of Water Spot and Hyper Voice could knock out. The other thing you have to be aware of though is the Wide Guard from Smeargo. Do Smeargo go for Wide Guard? Looks like it's not going to go for it. It's just going to go for a Spiky Shield here to try and get more, uh, more boost or actually just take advantage of this Tailwind coming out from Talonflame. So Talonflame knows it is not long for this battle, goes ahead and sets the Tailwind up will probably go down, oh, not quite go down to the Dazzling Gleam, but Kyogre's Ice Beam into the Protect, actually. So Talonflame will actually stick around for another oh! turn, and Evasion again for the Smeargle, but drops its accuracy. Oh my gosh, this is such a <laughs> Smeargle, just Smeargle things. Yeah. Uh, if I'm Justin, I'm actually probably happy that that Talonflame doesn't mm -hmm. get knocked out, because that means that one turn of Tailwind is burned, and he doesn't get a free yeah. switch and into that Groudon that's most likely in the back. So Talonflame here most likely going to have to go for a Brave Bird, knock itself out. Mm -hmm. Then it's a question of, can Smeargle outspeed the Kyogre Tailwind up, but we did see a speed, speed drop. Yeah, uh, so it's kind of built based off how that Smeargle is trained, and then and also if they can hit the Smeargle. That's also a very, very big deal. And you know, even if you can't do that, the Smeargle, of course, his accuracy is decreased. Like Kyogre here is going to protect. Interesting. Kyogre just just decides to protect itself this turn. Talonflame goes for the Brave Bird into the protect. Xerneas will get off a dazzling gleam. Will connect with. Uh, with Sebastian's Pokemon, does wow. tax the Smeargle, not even enough to take it down to its Focus Sash. I believe it got some special defense boost mm -hmm. in some of its previous Dark moody's. Void! Kyogre protects itself. Xerneas avoids the Dark Void. Smeargle gets another Moody boost. It's a speed Speeding. increase and an attack drop. So Smeargle's like, all right, you dodged me once. Can you do it again? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, oh it's and it's Xerneas wow. in the back, actually. So Xerneas, the final Pokemon for Sebastian, that really means that this Smeargle is going to need to hit some Dark Voids. It is, yeah. Uh, you know, basically right now you need to be able to shut down that opposing Xerneas, mm -hmm. and it did get that speed increase. Let's see if, first of all, if it doesn't outspeed, then uh, I guess yeah. it's still not over. Technically, a Smeargle could Dark Void, but uh, Sebastian's still definitely in this, and that's because Smeargle can do Smeargle things. Yeah. Well, that's just what Smeargle does. Woo! Here we go! <laughs> Dark Void does go first. It is going to connect with Justin's team. So does it, it get looks both? like, does it get both? Oh! It's going, oh, it misses Xerneas again. It only gets Kyogre. Kyogre will fall asleep, but Xerneas, crucially, not going to be able to, not going to be put to sleep, will be able to deal some damage. Sebastian does get his Geomancy off on his Xerneas. Can Xerneas hit Smeargle? As we wait for this Geomancy, oh my the crowd gosh. is waiting does for it. Does it hit? Does it hit? <laughs> does it hit? Xerneas just busy boosting itself, wants the opportunity to deal some damage. It hits! It hits. It will connect with the Xerneas, with the Smeargle. Smeargle oh. will go down. It's a critical hit on Sebastian Xerneas anyway. And a one-hit KO. <laughs> Justin takes game two back, and we are headed to a game three. Woo! That's all I got to <laughs> say. Oh, man, I'm hearing the USA uh -oh. chants now. <laughs> we, we've got a competing chance in the crowd. 
Sebastian <laughs> calling for backup. <laughs> the energy out there is amazing right now. I just saw Marcus Statter look like, you guys serious? Like, what's, what's going, going on, on over here? <laughs> but, uh, Wondering why no one's training Germany. <laughs> right, I mean, you gotta think about it though, right? This is for Todd Cut. This literally the winner of this game will be in the Top Cut elimination bracket. Yeah. And this is so exciting. We're going down to game three. All right, game three, Sebastian Escalante winning this gives Argentina its first ever Masters Top Cut appearance. Appearance. Justin Karras wants to be one of the first Americans to qualify for the Top Cut this year. Whew, these have been some fun games. They have, and I want to say that Justin played that second game really well, and that Infernape was the key in yeah. quick guarding. Uh, you yeah, know, showing that quick guard was huge that first turn. Most players, their way to beat Xerneas is to use actually priority attacks. Let me mm -hmm. fake you out so you can't get your Geomancy out. Let me taunt you with Prankster or something with priority. Yeah. Wasn't the case there. And the first turn played off perfectly. And I think Justin just ran away from that first turn. So if you're Sebastian, you need an allow. Make sure that that doesn't happen again, because that's a big deal. All right. Well, here we go. Game three, round five, Swiss. 2016 Pokemon World Championships. Winner advances to top cut, loser has to continue through the tournament. And some change-ups coming out for Justin goes with the Salamence Xerneas up against Sebastian, sticking with the Smeargle Xerneas. And we haven't seen that much Salamence this weekend. And uh, I think the, the fact that there's it's literally staring down Xerneas is the reason why. Yeah, that's uh, going to be a problem here, I think, if you're adjusting. We actually saw Sebastian reveal the fake out from Smeargle, too. Mm -hmm. So you actually have a very safe play here. You can just fake out Xerneas and kind of yeah. Geomancy. The only main thing here is that that's not 100% of a, you know, like the, the nice thing for Justin is that he does have that Bronzong, and Bronzong is such a nice ball one to just switch into and protect mm -hmm. when there is a Xerneas on the side. But Smirgo with Dark Void also makes things a little bit tricky, especially off the Moody Boost. So I'd say if you're Sebas uh, Sebastian, this is a really, really good lead for you. Now it's a question of how do you capitalize? Do you predict a Bronzong switch in and mm -hmm. how do you play around that? Because you know that you lost that last game based off Justin Xerneas just being able to sweep through everything. Yeah, definitely. I mean, these Xerneas mirrors always come down to who gets their Xerneas set up, who gets to, who takes the momentum early, and then whether or not the opponent can withstand the assault before Xerneas goes down. Here we go. No switch outs. So Salamence yeah. just Mega Evolves. No switch outs. Salamence just going to go ahead and Mega Evolve. May just want to get some double edges in on Sebastian Xerneas while it's trying to Geomancy here. Smeargle does go for the fake out onto Xerneas, the safe play that you identified. And Hyper, Hyper Voice. Voice actually coming out from Salamence. Will deal a lot oh. of damage, a critical hit onto Xerneas. Geomancy will come through though. Smeargle uh, down to a uh, red, breaking the Focus Sash, but still around for the next turn. Xerneas will become fully charged thanks to its power up and get its Geomancy boost, but that critical hit dealt a lot of damage back. That's definitely unfortunate. You never want to face any critical hits when you're using Xerneas, either mm -hmm. before the Geomancy or after, just because you wanted to be able to survive for as long as possible. What Moody boost do we get here? Moody, uh, oh, attack boost. It does negate the Intimidate, though. <laughs> in case Mirgo ends up in a position where he needs hey, to struggle. Fake, did you see Fake Out only did three damage? It could have used that attack boost. It needs that chip damage, man. <laughs> but, you know, here, it's an interesting position because, and Salamence protects, do we see something like a uh, Moonblast into the Xerneas on Justin's side? Yeah, Salamence oh, is going to protect. No. Dazzling Gleam coming out into the protect. Will connect with the Xerneas though. That deals a lot of damage back. Dazzling Gleam coming out from Justin, really afraid of that Smeargle. Picks up the KO onto Smeargle, deals no damage to Xerneas, though. Critical hit there could have been really scary, uh -huh. but I, I like uh, I can respect Sebastian's play there. He's most likely just going to go for a Dazzling Gleam and a Dark Void, mm -hmm. because you know that Salamence is kind of useless right now, yeah. and the thing is, it still is useless. Sebastian's played himself into a good position, whereas Xerneas, even though it took a lot of damage that first turn, is in a really good position to kind of sweep through. Yeah, that boosted Xerneas is just making life very difficult for Justin's regular Xerneas. You might want to switch it out for something like a Bronzong, but unless it's carrying a Lumberry, the threat of that Dark Void was just too much. Right, and there was no bronze on coming in here. We see a Moongus, which is a pretty nice Pokemon to switch into here, too. And the reason why I say that is because right now, the Xerneas on Sebastian's end can just Dazzling Gleam to pick up a double knockout. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so Justin here is forced to either protect and sacrifice or protect and switch out. Mm -hmm. And a Moongus is one of the best Pokemon to, you know, force or, you know, no, punish switch punishes outs. switches so hard with Spore. Exactly. All right. Justin looks like his back is against the wall. I mean, he has the Pokemon advantage, but Sebastian Xerneas is just so strong right now. And those are two Pokemon really ripe for the pickings right now. It is, and man, Sebastian just had a really good lead from the start. That fake out on Zer uh, Smeargle actually makes a difference there yeah. because most Smeargles nowadays don't have fake outs. So uh, I think that's a huge game changer for him. And no switch outs oh, here. No switches, just a double KO for Sebastian's Xerneas. KO on Salamence, KO on Xerneas. 
And then the Moongus will do something, but you know, it's not gonna do much of anything. Yeah, unless it's got something like a substitute or something fun. <laughs> Oh, oh Sporus Ole is coming out from the crowd. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Justin is going to have that Bronzong in the back, it looks like. So Bronzong out on the field alongside Kyogre. What a phenomenal position for Sebastian to be in. Yeah, phenomenal one, but it's still not necessarily over. You know, that first game was actually really close in the sense mm -hmm. that if Kyogre woke up and could maybe get some skill swap plays. And it's hard to be able to set up Trick Room here. So now you've got some mind games, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you want to, obviously, as the Xerneas, just try to knock out Kyogre maybe with the Moonblast. The Moongus is still looking really good, but as we saw, it doesn't have that many ways to effectively heal. Mm -hmm. And there is still Groudon in the back. And so it's still definitely doable for Justin here, but I think it's going to be a tough one. You really have to call, do I want a Gyro Ball here? Do I want to just set up Trick Room? Do mm -hmm. I protect a Kyogre predicting a... Does Moongus let you set up Trick Room? Right, right. You know, there could just be a Spore onto the Bronzong, and if Bronzong doesn't have a Lumberry, then it'll just fall asleep as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we haven't actually seen that Bronzong oh, take no so He just goes for the Moonblast. No Protect onto Kyogre. Does it knock so it much damage, no. not enough damage. Kyogre, though, will go for the Ice Beam. Ice Beam connects onto the Amoongus. Deals so much damage right back. Oh. And a freeze! He freezes the Amoongus. Amoongus is frozen solid. Bronzong uses Safeguard. The team is close. Oh, oh and Amoongus goes up for the oh. Grass Knot! Goes for the Grass Knot, picks up the KO onto Kyogre. Kyogre goes down! Argentina. You insane. have made it to the top cut of the 2016 Pokemon Video Game World Championships Welcome in the Masters Division. Welcome, Argentina. Oh, my gosh. Among Us, Xerneas against Bronzong, the forfeit coming out. Justin has lost. Sebastian won 2-1 in three games, advances to the top cut. For the first time, Argentina will be represented in the elimination bracket.